All right. Let me know when you guys are ready. Chad. It's from last week. Thank you for wearing a tie. All right, ready? All right. Uh, uh, good win uh, for us. Any win's a good win. Uh, you know, I thought it was a really good football game. I mean, that was a that was a good football game all around, both sides. Uh, Duke has a good football team. Uh, I do think that you know we were we came out, we we played fast, and that's what I was looking for uh, after the bye week, coming off the bye week to look fresh. Uh, looked like we were fast again, and that's kind of what we saw in practice during the week. That we 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 had our team speed w w was better again, and uh, I, we saw that tonight. The defense was flying around, uh, you know, doing a good job. I think they're improving uh, really every week. Uh, you know, doing a good job against the run. Uh, credit to you know what, what Tooch is doing and, and what Jess and, and Kyle Pope, you know, those guys with the front seven. Uh, you know, got some big stops when, when they had some. They had an explosive kickoff return. Uh, in the second half, uh, we got a, had some good stops in there. You know, they had some. Uh, you know, we were playing behind the sticks, field position wise. I think we had three or four uh, drives that started minus ten, minus. You know, three were in the minus nine, I think, and you know, one or two on the minus ten. Uh, you know, we, we got to do a better job in controlling the vertical field position in the football game, so we don't get in those holes so much and have the long fields to go. Uh, but we were moving the football, but you know. With with nine true possessions, and then you know the kneel down at the end of the game, and the uh, you know the twenty second possession before halftime, you know getting four scores out of three touchdowns and a field goal, we got to be a little more productive in the, on those things. But we get in the long field, so uh, we got to do a little better job with that. Um, but the kids played hard. I thought they played smarter tonight. I really do. Uh, you know, other than the, before halftime on, on defense, they had those uh, you know, a couple of chunk plays after the penalty on the on the punt. Uh, we'll take a look at that that penalty and see exactly what we need to talk about on Sunday with that one. Um, but uh, other than that, I mean, you know, I thought both teams played really hard. Uh, that was a good football game, and really uh, glad to be able to come out on top in that one. And I told the guys in the locker room afterwards that it was a uh, uh, you know enjoy the win, uh, enjoy every win. But then I challenged every person in the room, man to man, that when we come back in tomorrow. Right. The first thing we're going to do in the team meeting starts is we're going to make sure every person on this football team knows how to sing I'm a Ramblin' Rat from Georgia Tech. Because right? <laughs> there's a couple of young guys in there right, that, that aren't quite on it. So we're going to we have a lesson in that first. All right? But I challenged them all to be just as critical after this game right, as they were two weeks ago. Right? And to make sure that we improve in the same regard in the next week, because we we have a tough stretch coming up, and we have a, a 12 o'clock kickoff uh, on Saturday. I believe it's 12 o'clock, right, Mike? Yeah, 12 o'clock kickoff. So uh, we'll be back to business. But really happy, uh, happy for the kids, uh, happy for the coaching staff. Okay, questions, Jackson. Your team seemed to play a pretty near perfect fourth quarter. What what, what allowed y'all to really rally and, and and score on both those drives, and then come up with the necessary stops to seal the game? Magic potion. <laughs> I mean, they, they halftime. I challenged the guys that it was going to be a four or it was going to be a second half game. We, we were it was a big field position game. Uh, you know, I know that the I know that Duke really had, had taken a lot of pride in, in you know taking teams in the fourth quarter and winning games in the fourth quarter. But that's what we we have too, right? Uh, regardless of the outcome of a couple of games this year, I, I think our guys have continued to play uh, throughout and. Uh, you know, and that's what they did. They kept playing. Uh, you know, there was good execution. I do think at the line of scrimmage, uh, I think our guys tended, uh, and I'll look at the tape and see it for sure. But I thought we started to wear them down a little bit. You know, some of those runs early on, uh, you know, that were three yards, four yards, two yards, you know, uh, six yards, and they started cracking. Uh, you know, Jamal had a good game running the football, but I thought Chad Alexander, man, he had some really hard physical runs there on some big, uh, some big downs in there. You put in a couple of wrinkles this week, um, having Harrison uh, come in and play as extra offensive lineman, and then also the way you guys use the screen game to seem to maybe loosen up the run a little bit for you. Was that sort of some of the stuff from the self scouting and the bye week that you guys wanted to add in? Yeah, we we got a little too constricted the last few weeks in playing in a in a, uh, in a phone booth a little bit. 
Uh, so we wanted to make sure that we, we spread it, spread it out, uh, work the field, you know, not just north and south, but east and west as well. Uh, we've, got, we've got guys that are explosive with the ball in their hand. Uh, and really the, the biggest challenge of that was Haynes negotiating the throw past those defensive ends. I mean, they're in race charges up the field, you know, mo almost the whole game. Uh, so that was the challenge, and we felt like Haynes would be able to do that and, and, and spit the ball out there. And I thought those guys, I mean, we didn't have a lot of, you know, Long, big passes, but we had some really crucial catches and some crucial situations, I thought. Right. You got a 128 yards from Jamal, but how, how big were the, the uh, 59 yards from Chad, especially, you know, the runs he had in the fourth quarter? I knew you were going to ask a running back question. <laughs> That's my position. Did you, is that what you played? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's like I said, I mean, they, they – Chad had some really good hard runs. I mean, there was some third down runs in there he had, and uh, uh, Ramp got behind his pads. And, and for a smaller back, he's got he's an explosive guy, and I thought he showed it tonight. Sure. A couple weeks ago on the radio show, you talked about Jamal and his nagging injury and how he's fought through that. Um, just how tough has that been on him? I guess even mentally and emotionally to have to deal with that week in and week out. Yeah, I mean, anytime you're anytime you're not performing the way you know you're capable of. Uh, it's it's tough, but it, you know, look, it's not just Jamal. I mean, I thought we we played better as a unit up front uh, tonight, and, and especially in some of the, the short yardage situations, we added a couple of wrinkles in there that helped us. Uh, it, but those some of those things were added because we were able to have guys at full full speed and, and, and fully healthy. So, uh, but after the game, yeah, I gave Jamal a big hug and I said, man, it was really good to see a 100% number 11 out there. And you know, watching practice really from Sunday. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, you know, guys that, that are banged up at practice, they wear a black jersey. And uh, at the end of practice, I went out and I had uh, equipment guys go grab grab his jersey out of his locker. And uh, I took that black jersey off of him before the last period in practice and went through it in the garbage can and gave him his white one back. It must have been like Superman like, taking his, you know, or whatever. So, but no, he did a good job. <laughs> I don't think that would have been very uh, wise. So. No, but he, he's a tough kid. He's a we have, we have some tough kids on our team. Sure. Uh, Vandenberg had a big game today. Had the sack, two tackles for loss. Just uh, speak on his performance here tonight and just his progression here in the defense. Yeah, he, he's been playing. Uh, he's been playing better and better each week. Uh, you know, here in the start tonight, through what he had done in the last uh, several games, the production he's had. Uh, he, he's, I mean, it's not even close. That he's the strongest guy on the football team. I mean, he might be one of the strongest guys in the, in the country. I mean, he's he's a powerful, strong guy, but he also has enough agility and quick body quickness to be able to uh, to be able to be disruptive. All right, so uh, he's he's improving each week. Uh, he's another one that overcame some you know some some nagging uh, injuries uh, along the way, and was at full speed tonight. And I think it really helped us out in, the, in there. Uh, Coach, I want to ask you a little about your rush defense tonight. You held Star Thomas only 52 yards rushing, comes off 166-yard rushing performance against UNC. How were you guys able to just to ball him up tonight and kind of contain him? Well, we made sure tackles. Uh, we, we filled our gaps. We played blocks. Uh, played the blocks well. I can't say enough about Jess Simpson and the job he does coaching technique uh, on the defensive line. Um, he understands the big picture uh, on defense, and he understands the big picture on offense. And, and he's a great teacher. I mean, for all those years as a head high school coach and, and, a, and a teacher, that shows. And, and he, uh, those guys are they're very they, they've become very football smart. Okay, so they're they're understanding how to play different blocks, different schemes. Uh, you know, a couple of the, the ones that, that squirted through there for bigger bigger gains were ones that were really on us. We'll take a look at it and see you know, exactly what we what we messed up to. Uh, so we don't have that, but uh, you know, I've been. I've been very proud of the progression and uh, progression. Uh, the, speaking of rushing, uh, the progression of the, of the run defense, and I uh, hope it continues to get better and better because we have a big challenge coming up next week. Coach, I think you guys had three drives of ten or more plays. You guys were had seven third down conversions, three for three on fourth down. Um, these long drives—is that something that you kind of? I mean, so how much is that an emphasis to make sure that the drives are long, or is that just how you guys are just kind of taking what kind of comes to you? Where is that kind of coming from for you guys, and yeah. how do you do it so well? I mean, I like I like to score on one play every time, and I just, I mean, but no, it, it, it's complimentary football, right? And you know, 
could we line up and, and, and throw the ball every play or play tempo every play? But, you know, it, as, a, as a staff, we, we, we meet a lot together, uh, myself, the coordinators, uh, meet on Thursdays, and we talk about how to play the game. We talk about, uh, you know, how we have to complement each other. Right? And, and that's what it's about. It, it, this, is, this is a football team. It's not just the offense, not just the defense, not just the kicking game, special teams, right? We got to play complementary football, right? And, uh, I mean, looking at the time of possession, and look, time of possession is not a, a, a stat that is truly indicative always of winning and losing games, right? But if it fits into the style of play that you're playing, it does. And it takes away the amount of time they have the ball. And, but when you're doing that, you, you, you've got you to score, right? And, and that one point when it was, what, 10 to 7, I mean, we'd had, you know, several possession, long possessions. I think at halftime, we, it was the same. It was like kind of 2 to 1 time of possession, but it was a, you know, three-point game. Right? So you've got to be efficient in those drives as well. And I think that's, like I said, when I opened up, uh, we've got to be a little more efficient in some of those things. Um, uh, or on, on some of those drives and finishing it with, with points on the board. Coach, two questions for you. Obviously, talk about Tacey more and how he's been able to progress. And then second question, I see the addition to your hat. Just kind of talk about that as well. Yeah. Uh, well, Tay, I mean, Tay's earned, earned what he's, you know, the, the spot that he's in. Um, I mean, there was a string in there. I mean, he had, you know, pass breakup, tackle, tackle for law. I mean, he, he was all over the field. And, and the big thing we talked about this week was playing fast. We talked about playing fast and playing fast not being, you know, hey, Eric is fast. We all know that, right? And the opening kickoff, I mean, he was – and uh, – but there's being fast and there's playing fast, right? You play fast when you start to – when the game starts to slow down, right? When you, when you start to really know what to do, know what the offense is doing, anticipate things that are going to happen, right? You know, now you're a step ahead, two steps ahead. So, I think that's what he's doing. And the more, more he's playing, you know, the more experience he's getting, the better he's becoming. And then, uh, you know, I think everyone knows that – what I have on there? No. Uh, uh, you, you know, one of the greatest players to play here, uh, Billy Shaw, and, and that's what it was. It was a uh, just for him. Uh, you know, passed away yesterday, and uh, you know, NFL Hall of Famer. You know, unbelievable career uh, here, unbelievable career in the, in the National Football League, and I believe to this, you know, this day he's still the only person that's ever uh, that's in in the NFL Hall of Fame that never played actually in the NFL. And, uh, you know, he was in the AFL, Buffalo Bills, the whole time. And just someone that is at 83, 84, and obviously passed away at 85, became a good friend. Just, a, just someone that, you know, even as he got, you know, in, in, you know later on and on, I mean, just, he would send me send text messages or when he couldn't talk on the phone. I mean, just, you know, just, just a good, good man. And uh, uh, he's a tech man. And he did a lot here. Uh, did a lot for his place, and anytime somebody stands up at Canton and says that they went to the greatest university in the world, right? You, you know they love this place. Okay, time for just a couple more. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, going into the fourth quarter, Tech they last scored uh, in the ten minute mark in the second quarter. What what do you think led to that turnaround? For Magic. The <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it was. Uh, we really started playing the field uh, field position battle. Uh, you know, we had, like I said, we had two, two that were in the, the minus nine in the first half, one in the minus ten, and then all of a sudden, boom, minus nine again. Uh, we were able to punch it out of there, uh, you know, get the ball, you know, flip the field. We got two big stops, you know, big stop on defense after they, you know, went the length, and then we got uh, they missed the field goal. So we were able to, you know, gain some advantage in the field position. Um, but, you know, then, like I said, I think we, we started to wear them down a little bit. Um, which is a, a credit, you know, when, when, when you see that happen, you see we start to run the ball a little better and, and as the game goes on and, and protect better and uh, stop the run and, you know, close coverage more and more. Really, that, that's a credit to what the what these guys do from January. That, those are things that are built in the weight room from January, February, March, you know, not just in the last week of practice or whatnot. Okay. John, if you want to wrap this up, please. It took uh, 59 minutes and 30 seconds or whatever for your first interception of the season, but guys were – on the ball, had their hands on the ball more in the secondary in this game. Yeah. Is it, I know you talked about wanting that. You had one interception taken away on an interesting penalty. But um, just talk about, I guess, kind of what you've seen with that progression there and, and then your secondary being maybe more aggressive or whatever was working for them tonight to, to get their hands on the Well, they, they've got to continue to be more aggressive. Uh, you know, and, and that's what they did. They, they challenged the receivers. Uh, that's something 
really for the last two weeks we've really emphasized. And, you know, from this past Sunday's practice, you know, through the week, we got our hands on more balls, had more interceptions, more, you know, you know strips. Because uh, it, it wasn't just emphasized. It was overly emphasized every single play. Um, so, you know, it, it's good to be able to have that happen. But, uh, you know, hopefully they continue. Thank you, Coach. That's it. All right, go Jackets. Thank you.